Star Garden is back after a only three year long hiatus. Dude, Mundo skins have had a longer hiatus than that. Yeah. But with the return of Star Guardians comes new Star Guardian skins. Way too fing many of them, in my opinion. That's a lot of skins, dude. And in my severe and continuous lapse of my judgment, let's review every single one of them. Not the Wild Drifter Legends of Runeterra ones, though, because I have a life still. Also keep in mind that this review is coming from the perspective of an outsider. Someone who doesn't like anime, doesn't like Sailor Moon, and <laughs> doesn't like Kaisa. So if these skins have references that I'm missing or nods to tropes I don't know about, be sure to let me know down in the comments. Peacefully. Don't be like Twitter. Anyways, let's get this show on the road, starting with Star Guardian Kaisa. I mean, this was bound to happen eventually, right? One of the more recent poster children of League has finally gotten a legendary skin, and yeah, it's alright. It's about what I expected from a modern legendary skin, nice particle effects animations, and they even stay true to Kaisa's original voice actor legends of Runeterra. I know what they are. <laughs> I could see the skin causing in-game issues in the future though, because it really just looks like Star Guardian luckless shoulder pauldrons, but when has visual clarity ever mattered to popular champions? Tanzanite is the best Chroma, 7 out of 10. Star Guardian Sona. I like this one a lot, actually. Sona always strikes me as the shy loner type, and this skin really accentuates that. I love all the little extra details on this skin. The nerdy glasses, the wings on her empowered spells, and the tiny mouse familiar having to interpret for her since she's still mute. Precisely! I don't have a lot to say about it, I just think it's really well done. Rose Quartz is the best Chroma, 8.5 out of 10. Star Guardian Neela. Man, <laughs> am I the only one who's sick of new champions being tied to an event? I get it, it's an easier way to market them, but under the avalanche of new Star Guardian skins, is anyone really gonna give a shit about Neela being there. She's just a side character. Most of the new Star Guardians are entirely unimportant to the core narrative, while Kaisa and Akali get pretty much everything. Not to mention, apparently Neela is an elder Star Guardian who's just been here the whole time. Okay. I'm just not feeling this one, dude. Even if it was exceptional, I just can't shake the feeling that Neela didn't even get two seconds of peace before being crushed by the hype of Star Guardians. Tanzanite is the best Chroma, 5 out of 10. Star Nemesis Fiddlesticks. I absolutely love it. It's so different than anything I could have expected, and so different from anything Fiddlesticks has in his catalog. Plus, introducing the concept of Star Nemesis, a Star Guardian so corrupt, so far gone that they aren't even human anymore, opens the floodgates for possible champions in the future that realistically could have never been a part of this skin line. And while normally a horrible mismatch of colors usually clutters the skin visually, in this instance I think it helps exemplify Fiddle's chaotic nature. Is it better than Surprise Party? No. That's pretty much impossible though, that skin's like a 12 out of 10. <laughs> But as far as Star Nemesis Fiddlesticks goes, Wicked is the best Chroma, 10 out of 10. Star Guardian Echo. So apparently people don't like this skin? Like, really, really don't like this skin? I haven't checked for myself, but uh... Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Okay, I'm gonna play a bit of devil's advocate here and say, fellas, it isn't that bad. Is it boring? Yeah, but as someone who isn't a fan of this aesthetic as a whole, honestly, it isn't any more boring than any of the other skins. Overall, I don't think it's bad, but I don't think it's really good either. A perfect middle of the road average skin, but I guess fans are probably hoping for more than that. Obsidian is the best Chroma, five out of 10. Prestige Star Guardian Echo. Hey, remember when Riot said we'd be getting an overhaul to the event pass system? Six fucking months ago. The newest pay $15 to grind for a month straight skin is here, and uh, yeah, it's an improvement to the original, but not by much. As usual, the event pass skin is really not worth the grind. 5 out of 10. Star Guardian Akali. Oh god, I've been banning Irelia for so long now because people stop playing Akali, I'm gonna have to start banning Akali again. But as for the skin, like Kaisa, it's pretty alright. At least this one has the benefit of looking wholly unique from the other Star Guardians. My only real point of interest and frankly contempt with this skin is that. How, how could you do that to me? Ruby is the best Chroma, 8 out of 10. Star Guardian Talia. It is heavily teased and implied that in this universe, Talia is trans, which is great. Yeah. It's something the narrative writer intended for her return version to be originally. And you know what else is great? Talia finally having a skin that isn't fucking blue. <laughs> the only thing that really bogs this down for me is the rock textures. I feel like they could have been a lot more creative than just turning the rocks pink. But other than that, this skin is phenomenal. Talia is a perfect fit for the skin line. The familiar popping up all the time is Love cute that. as fuck. And it's a charity skin. So now I can feel a whole 2% less horrible about giving Riot Games my money. Ruby is the best Chroma, 9 out of 10. Star Guardian Rel. It's been a long time coming, Rel, my dear, and was it worth the wait like fiddlesticks? Well, not really. No. Actually not. Maybe I'm still salty about Rel not being in High Noon, maybe the armor clashes with the aesthetic of Star Guardians too much, but whatever it is, something about this just feels off to me. And narrative-wise, she's just kind of there, the tomboy delinquent of the team even though one already existed. If you're a Rel main and been waiting all this time for one and you like it, that's great. But for me, I don't think it was worth the wait. Sapphire's the best Chroma, 6 out of 10. Star Guardian Quinn. Initially an odd choice for the skin line, but one that I like fine enough. Valor being the familiar just makes sense, and oh my god, he's a baby chicken bird! I don't have a lot to say about this one. It's hindered a bit by the age of her model, but I love, love, love the creativity with Valor on this one. Pearl is the best Chroma, 7 out of 10. Star Nemesis Morgana. So I got a lot of, uh... 
interesting comments about my initial perspective on this skin. Fellas, being critical of something doesn't automatically mean you hate it. I didn't even say the skin was bad. It's really well made, in fact. If she's meant to be a stereotypical Sailor Moon villain, that's great. I didn't know that because, dude, I can barely force myself to watch shows I already know I like. In what world am I gonna sit down and watch Sailor Moon? Star Nemesis Morgana initially unimpressed me because we already saw Fiddlesticks. We were presented an entirely new subsection of Star Guardian only for Morgana to basically be Zoe with Fiddlesticks' color scheme. All I was saying is that I thought Evelyn would have been a better fit than Morgana. Hell, now that I think about it, Belveth would have been great too. They could far better fit the idea of the sexy teacher in disguise, but is actually a horribly corrupt supervillain. And in this way, these champions could better represent that side of this thematic, but they could also represent the horribly corrupt thematic set by Fiddlesticks. And if my suggestions for a fictional video game character cosmetic genuinely upset you that much to the point where you're pulling out the Ace Phobia card, you're the problem, IG, not me. Wicked is the best Chroma, 8 out of 10. Prestige Star Guardian Syndra. Oh boy, so apparently Prestige Syndra is also gonna be Event Pass exclusive, meaning there are gonna be two 2000 Event Token skins available for only one single one month pass? And that... Holy shit, that's scummy. I'd probably be even more upset about it if I thought the skin was good. Surprise, surprise, Sendra turned evil. Who could have seen that coming? But ironically, her default Star Guardian skin looks more evil than this one does. I know it's a prestige skin, but color is a very powerful tool when it comes to character design. And the good version of Star Guardian Sindra being dark purple while the evil one is bright blue and gold is just... No, not a fan of this one, but I guess I'm not really a fan of most prestige skins anymore. 5 out of 10. Overall, Star Guardian 2022 gets a 6.5 out of 10 for me. A few shining stars in this bunch, but on the whole, most of these are just average at best for me. For me anyway, it doesn't help that like a lot of recent events, it's more about the onslaught of skins rather than any actual new content. No PvE, a visual novel for the third year in a row, a reskin of the Ruination mode, they didn't even bother to change the icon, and most of the new champions who got added to this universe for this event add little to nothing narratively. Hell, Zaya and Rakan matter infinitely more than most of these new ones and their skins aren't even on League PC. But those are my thoughts. What do you guys think? of Star Guardian 2022. Be sure to let me know down in the comments. Again, this review is coming from a very clear anti-anime bias, so if you like these skins, then be my guest. Tell me why you like them so much. And if you do like them and are considering purchasing them, perhaps even because of this video, this is probably the part where I tell you to use my League Partner Program Creator Code to do so. If I had one! Oh, you're still here. Oh cool, I guess I'll take this time to tell you guys about my Patreon. And if you guys remember the last episode of Rapid Fire Skin Review we did was the Patreon tier, the top one that has only one slot, and Zeno wasn't sane enough to do it again, so <laughs> that's gonna be next week's video is gonna be Rapid Fire Skin Review for Spirit Blossom. I hope you guys have been enjoying the weekly content, by the way. I know I have been. I just it feels good to be doing stuff consistently, you know? As for Patreon, I'm looking to try and rearrange it a bit, because right now it's pretty much entirely a support platform. You don't really get any benefits for being a Patreon of mine. Now, I know I've asked you guys to put your thoughts in the comments several times in this video already, but I guess that's another thing to ask. If you have any ideas for what I could do to my Patreon to help make it more incentivizing, then, you know, let me know. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, fellas. This was a long one for Rapid Fire Skin Review, but uh, I'll see you next week. Have a good one.